Hey everyone, Josh here. Just doing a quick um, fuel filter change with the Torig here. Um, I've got a bit of an issue with misfiring, and actually I had an issue with uh, hard starts and stuff. So I just thought I'd do a quick kind of video and uh, just kind of show my issues that I've had with this so far. Um, I've also realized I haven't really done a video on the first 15,000 kilometers that I've had this on the road. So um, if you want to strictly watch this video for the fuel filter and the misfire diagnostics, I'll put a link in the bottom or like the time stamp or whatever to skip to, or I'll put it in the bottom of this video here. Um, but yeah, I'll quickly go over the first 15,000 on the road with this thing and then uh, get into diagnosing the fuel filter issue. So just a quick catch up on the uh, first 15,000 of this thing on the road. Uh, I just finished the second oil change. And first one was done quick, pretty quickly after getting the cam in. So this is the first long mileage oil change. And you see, I got about 8 liters that came out. It holds about 11 and a half or 12, so it drank a bit of oil. Um, it was all over the winter time, so it's got a lot of cold starts and idling and stuff like that, so not the most favorable conditions. Um, the next issue I had right after getting it on the road actually was I got stranded at the beer store with a uh, no start. Um, it cranked and cranked and cranked, it wasn't getting fuel, and uh, ended up killing the battery, which was it was a weak battery to begin with as well. So got in the boost, lots of cranking, got it going again, and uh, ended up the fuel filter was pretty clogged up. So I'll, uh, this video will kind of jump around back to then and now, and I'm hoping I can solve an issue that I've got now with the high speed stuttering. So yeah, that was the next issue. And the last issue is an intermittent battery drain, which I'm thinking is the Kessie module or however you want to say that. Um, haven't done much diagnostics on that yet, so that's to come. But so anyways, that's just the first 15,000. Uh, lots of daily driving, a little bit of towing if you checked out my last video on it. And yeah, it's been a nice comfortable ride so far. No real complaints. The fuel mileage is getting a lot better in the summer here now. It's 9.5 litres to 100 kilometres, which... It read about 0.5 high, so it's probably around nine liters per 100 kilometers mark. So I'm fairly happy with that. And uh, yeah, with that, we'll get back to the fuel filter part. Okay, so if you're just joining now, or if you've already watched that, so we're doing the fuel filter. Here is my fuel filter with 15,000 kilometers on it. Here's my new fuel filter. So the PDs are known to getting a little bit of oil in the fuel when the injectors fuel start leaking. So I don't know if you're a PD expert. Can you comment if that seems to be a lot or not? I don't think it's supposed to be that black after 15,000, but it's not the end of the world, I don't think. So I'll pop a new filter in. I'm going to jump back and, and uh, compare it to my latest video or my first uh filter change i don't know the mileage on it then it was pretty black as well as far as the what's in the canister a little bit of algae or something on the bottom there the first one was pretty bad as well so i'll jump to that one and then uh we'll get back to it so here's the filter out of it uh seems it's a bit slimy, you can see there's a bunch of black gunk on it. Um, yeah, definitely doesn't look like the new one. Um, and this is out of the bottom of the, the um, housing. So you can see there's quite a bit of water in the bottom. That was a clean pail, so it was, there was a bunch of junk in it. So we're gonna put a new filter in it and uh, go out and see what happens. So I got the new filter in here, and I filled the, or the canister up with some diesel purge. Uh, 
diesel swear by it with the LH, so pour it into a jug and then run it off straight diesel purge. Uh, the downside with this thing is it's got a um, transfer pump to get it up to the tandem pump, so it's kind of hard without making up a, a pump of some sort to feed tandem pumps to run it straight. So this will be the next best thing, is fill that right full. So one canister didn't fill it up, so it's probably, I don't know, three quarters. It's pretty close to the top, so I'd maybe get two cans if you're going to do this. So now we'll bolt it down and then uh, there's a bleed screw on the top. We'll just turn the key over till we see fuel there and we'll uh, maybe. Okay, so I take back what I said. Uh, with the canister tightened down, I loosened that screw, a little bit of air came out and then a bunch of uh, diesel purge came out. So I'm going to think one canister is locked for this thing. So now I'm going to skip to what this was doing before. If you have headphones on, if you can really listen, you can hear about the 2000 RPM and above. It's got a bit of a stutter. Um, it's kind of hard to pick out in the video, but if you are running into this issue yourself, you'll definitely know what I mean. I also had some issues with uh, cranking after some sits for a bit. So I don't know if the injectors were leaking down and losing the prime and the injector rails in there. So. Yeah, I'll jump to that and then we'll go out for a drive. So we're gonna do some uh, hard pulls wherever, hopefully you're doing this to do wherever it's safe. So we'll see how it works. back to the tank. for a drive and did some uh, some good pulls with it and still seems to be doing the stuttering issue um, my previous issue of having hard starts and stuff that was fixed after my first fuel filter change so if you're having uh, um, hard starts that's definitely something I would look at as you can see the the filter earlier in the video was pretty black so next up um, I know I've got good pressure, but I just thought I'd show this setup here as well as uh, some things to look at on VCDS. Um, I don't think I'm going to be solving my issue in this video, but may as well document it for everybody else if they have this issue or have an issue with the fuel. So I just want to make sure I've got good fuel pressure to the tandem pumps. So on this one, which is an 06 V10, the rear line here is the pressure line to go up to my gauge and then it goes there and then that feeds your both your tandem pumps so that one there is your return so i've got a 15 psi gauge so it doesn't have to be anything too fancy just to eat in that was five sixteenths hose i think maybe three eighths it was pretty snug, so I think it might have been 5 16 hose going on to 3 8 barbs. But we're going to go uh, take it for a drive and watch pressure. 
Actually, I can start it up here right now and see. So I'm doing this out outside of town, so I don't have any street lights. So this DeWalt light's gonna work. Um, so the nice part about having this plumbed in after the fuel filter is you know the supply pressure that the tandem pumps are getting. So it's about eight psi now. So if you have a dirty fuel filter, it might be sitting lower. Or you might notice when you do a hard pull, it might drop down to zero or low. And then you know you're not getting a good supply of fuel to your pumps and ultimately starving the unit injectors so first off we're just going to do a little pull let's see if it doesn't seem too bad there So I got the light sitting in the other way now, so <laughs> you can kind of see it's, I'll just say that's roughly 8 PSI there. injector deviation here so I'm on the engine one so it's bank one uh, group 13 and 14 those are the five cylinders so the injector deviation is the amount of fuel the ECU needs to vary on each cylinder to make it run smooth so whether you have a worn cam uh, low compression or a bad injector that will make these vary a bit. Uh, I think the spec is plus or minus uh, two, which I've got one there, that's 1.2. Um, I'll switch over to the uh, bank two and we'll take a look at it next. So this side here is not near as bad, and I think this number improved from the last time I had checked it. Um, worst one over here is at 0.5. So that's something to take a look at. And then the next one is... This is the BIP value, so the before or beginning of an injection period. So that's so that's how long the ECU is seeing before when it tells it to inject and when it actually injects. So the negative numbers are usually a good indication it's starving for fuel. Um, normally idle, it's uh, slightly negative, not the end of the world. 
strip it off, it goes to 0.7 or so, or negative 70. We'll just go for a quick drive here and see what these numbers do. Uh, we throw some, we'll throw one more. steady as I can here. last poll obviously my car isn't fixed uh, if there's anybody watching this video that's smarter than me and can pinpoint it over a video of what's actually going on just let me know um, yeah both of these dip values are negative on both banks so I kind of have a hard time believing that both uh, tandem pumps failed but I guess I never know um, but yeah so that's just a kind of a quick uh, fuel check on the V10 and uh, might be getting into injectors or possibly some transmission work yet. I'm not sure uh, which way to go with this yet. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more V10 videos whether it's on this green one or my tan one comes on here shortly as well. Alright, thanks for watching.